He will face 23-year-old Norm Duke, who won here in 1983 to become the youngest man ever to win a PBA title. The winner will take on Dave Ferraro, who won his first PBA title last year. In second place, Mats Carlson of Sweden. He won the Greater Los Angeles Open back in January. And our tournament leader from Tacoma, Washington, Brian Voss, who is also looking for his second title of 1987. That's our field for the Miller Lite Open on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we return to the Buckeye Lanes in North Olmsted, Ohio, a suburb of Cleveland. And believe me, Lake Erie is sparkling today with a spring sun here in northern Ohio, second to none. We have a second to none telecast, too, because we have five wonderful finalists. Great opportunity for them because this is the third of the Miller Brewing Company sponsored professional bowlers tour telecasts on the winter tour. We appreciate their help. It's always a great championship when they're involved. In our field of five, there are a total of seven titles. You might look ahead and remember that during the week, Brian Voss and Norman Duke rolled perfect 300 games. And speaking of perfection, later today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, World Figure Skating Champions Tour, which is accompanied by live coverage of the NCAA Wrestling Championships. 17-time champion, Nelson Burton Jr. is here again. Bo, hi. Thank you, Chris. We uh, have had 10 telecasts coming into the day, and we have had 10 different winners. Well, I think that tells a story that we saw earlier in the year, that the PBA Tour is no longer open for domination. But simply the fact is this, one of the two players in the one, number one position and number two position can be the first player to win his second title of the 1987 season. But I think an interesting story is to watch the style of two of the players today. Number one in the first match, Phil Ringener. For you players who like to throw it hard and straight, watch him. In the semifinal match, Mats Carlson, who has a chance to win his second title, he throws it very slow and straight. So it should be very interesting, a lot to learn from the league players. Obviously, the scoring has been sensational. The players average better than 234 on the TV pair. Chris, they're ready for some more hot action. And so are we. You see the two participants in the first match. Numbers five, Phil Ringener. Looking at him on the right, he will bowl first, going against the number four finisher, Norm Duke. Duke's only victory came here at the Buckeye Lanes in 1983. And as we mentioned, trying to become another of those champions in a Miller Lite championship. And uh, Big Phil at 5'11", 215 pounds, leaves the 2'5 on the left lane. The championship pair in lanes 21 and 22 here at Buckeye Lanes, a 48-lane bowling establishment, has uh, a characteristic that is very favorable to scoring. Number one, the left-hand lane hooks what the players call a pinch more. That's about a board more than the right-hand lane. So there's no big adjustments to make. Just make good shots, and the scores will come. So the tension is off now for the hard-throwing Phil Ringener from Big Springs, Texas, and a little fellow from Fort Worth, Texas, five-year veteran at 23 years of age, Norm Duke, smooth Norm Duke, eighth television appearance, in those five years, one victory. Leaving the two pin on the right lane. Duke playing the right hand lane, an extreme outside line as you see the profile of Norm Duke. Five step delivery. He used to be a seven step delivery to get enough momentum in that 125 pound frame, the high backswing. Tremendous knee bend, that right knee down low to the ground, then a good bend with the left knee pretty close to the foul line with that foot. Left of center. Really got low. Got to too bad. And we're all even after one frame in our very first match. And bringing you up to date, reminding you that Dave Ferraro of Kingston, New York, will meet the winner of this game. Then Mats Carlson of Gothenburg, Sweden, to be followed in the final match against the tournament leader, Brian Voss of Tacoma, Washington. 
You may, as you hear Norm Duke roll the ball down the lane, hear a clicking sound. His ball has a high track. That means it rolls up near the thumb and finger holes, and every once in a while you'll hear it ticking or clipping the thumb holes as it goes down the lane. You'll hear them cheering or chanting uh, Duke, Duke, of course his last name. So they're not booing him. No problem right here for Norm Duke on the left-hand lane. A little problem with the carrying action as he leaves a solid 10. Norm Duke, a very deliberate player, and uh, we have to bring out this rule that we enforce in the PBA. A player has 15 seconds to make a shot once he steps upon the approach. So uh, Duke, a deliberate player, and Mats Carlson, a deliberate player, will watch that. There is a penalty if you violate that rule. You're getting a lesson, all of you watching, wherever you are. I hope you're enjoying it on the shooting of spares. So with the spare up now, Phil Ringener, 28-year-old professional, eight years standing, still looking for his first victory, is back out on the tour now full-time. Powerful man takes that five-step delivery, has that chin tucked down in that to his chest like a boxer. High backswing, cup wrist, and then he snaps down through. As you see his head pull off the target, and I think that's one of the problems he has. And you'll we'll watch his foot at the foul line next time we get a shot up there. Now the 215 pounder. Now we'll watch Norm Duke along with you, um, each professional with two spares. Bringing her, of course, will be shooting on the left lane now. Duke moving over to the right-hand chair. Phil was out here for a number of years and looked like he was really starting to blossom into a contender. And then he went into a slump at the end of the winter season last year. He decided to take off some time, and right now he's fighting for his exemption to stay out here on the tour. This is his last exempt week, and he says his game is starting to come back around. So this is a big week for him. Phil's best finish here in the Cleveland area was 27th in 1981. Well, we, hear, we see the solid 10. Here's the six pin right over here on the right-hand part of your screen. Watch as the six pin just goes flying right around the 10 pin. Phil has had some high finishes, fifth in Austin in 85, fifth at the AC Dalco in 83. Three spares for Ringana. Norm Duke now up. Well, who's going to get the first strike today, Chris? Well. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what we expected. I'll tell you what. They happened. see a 190 game, huh? Or two. Well, every once in a while, but uh, I think that the players found a lane condition as you look at the fingertip grip of Norm Duke. He just sticks the fingers down into the first knuckle, stretches that hand out, balances it in the palm. Uh, the pe players are getting a much slicker lane condition than they've seen all week. You know, there's such irony. Here's a man that took last week off, Norm Duke, came to Cleveland to practice and still battling for that first X. You're right, Chris, as you see the pinfall. Watch, he has a 2-4-5 standing at one point, and then the head pin comes back off the sideboard and eliminates the four, seven, and the five pin, leaving an easy spare. But Chris, when he practiced during the week, I'm not sure that he saw a lane condition quite this slick, and he hasn't quite adjusted his speed or his bowling equipment to that lane condition yet. What an impressive week, because he had a perfect 300 game and then three 279s. But right now, uh, like his opponent, uh, three consecutive spares. Norm, of course, the young man to win, the youngest man ever to win a PBA title, did it right here as he defeated some great opponents uh, such as Earl Anthony working on his thumb hole, put a piece of tape in there, puts a little rosin in there to get a good, solid feel. Uh, Chris, he has really blossomed into a, a top player. He needs to get a little winning confidence, and then I think he's going to be out here for a long, long time. He'll this will be the first strike of the match. Watch this right here. All right, 
He uh, wasn't happy with it, and he released it at the line, leaving the 3-6 on the left lane. Now, the problem with Norm here, he has the line on this lane. He left a 10-pin up here on the left, on that lane, and this, he just pulls the ball or helps it up to the pocket. You still must let the ball roll on a slick lane condition. Leaves himself a kind of a tough spirit, the 3-6. All right, nearing the halfway point of our first match, two-pin lead by Phil Ringener. Phil Ringener, 28 years old, Big Springs, Texas, leads by two pins. Three spares now shooting in the fourth frame as we look at Jill, Phil's wife. match. One of the dangers, uh, other than naturally scoring big bows, the fact that uh, if they shoot all spares would be on until tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> well, that's very true, Chris, but the possibility of that happening is remote as you see Phil Ringen are rooting his first strike in, breaking the ice, and I think that's what it needs. Sometimes it's just like a, uh, as you see the purse breakdown, uh, 27000 the winner, difference of $1,000 in this match. And going back, it's just like a football game. A team can't score, a team can't score. All of a sudden, somebody puts some points on the boards, and then everybody starts to score. Let's see what, if that happens in this match. So, Phil Bringer, Big Springs, Texas, puts the pressure on the young man from Fort Worth with that double. Now Duke will be shooting as we replay that last strike. I like this shot that Larry Cam, our director, brings to us. From down overhead, you see the player's trajectory, the angle, and the pinfall. Super shot. Great great to relate to the, uh, the average bowler and his reaction. We got Norm Duke quickly up behind him. That's a good courtesy by Duke right there to speed up the play. Meet the man you follow coming off the approach. Duke looking for his first strike. And a high hit leaving the 3-6 for Duke. Sounded like a thunderstorm going down there, Chris. Thump, 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 thump. And what happens is Norm Duke tries to guide the ball into the 1-3 pocket. When he does, he lets his thumb drop down to the left or counterclockwise too quickly, and the ball rolls over the thumb hole. For any of you players that have a trouble with your ball rolling over your thumb hole, hold your hand farther underneath the ball, and that'll keep it from hitting the thumb hole. Okay, Norman Duke, trailing by 14. Earlier, we asked Norman to talk about his 1983 victory in the Cleveland area. Well, it was such a great moment for me. Uh, it, was, it was the first show I'd ever made, and going against the great Earl Anthony out of the gate, uh, most stimulant time I've ever had. But uh, now I have to realize the, dif uh, the difficulty of winning four matches. I, I can't go back. That was then. This is now. Uh, four tough com opponents today. I just have to uh, play my own game, keep calm, and work hard. In addition, Anthony, he beat uh, Steve Cook, Steve Westberg, and Tom Milton. Tough, tough opponents, but this young man's a great match game player. Let's see if he can come back here. Earl Anthony. Uh, he bowled in uh, the Miller Light and he finished 65th. Here we see the pinfall of Norm Duke. He sends the side head pin the sideboard, knocks out the 457. And to follow up, uh, Chris, uh, Earl Anthony obviously out of retirement. And I think next week at the PBA National Championship at Toledo Imperial Lanes is going to be a pivotal tournament for Earl. He's always done well there. He's won the tournament three times. And I'm sure that he'll. Uh, judge how well he's coming back by his performance there. Now here's ringing her 14 pin lead. Wanted that 10 to jump out to a 24 pin lead. 22 left-handers started in the field of 160 and only two uh, moved into the top 24. Wife Jill who's an obvious rooter in the ring in her camp. Watching to see if Phil can convert this lead by 13. A lot of speed covering the 10 pin on the right lane. 13 pins uh, separating these two professionals. Capacity crowd here, as always, wherever we go. And of course, there's always, in a bowling establishment, limited seating space. 
just there you see how they really pack them in. Yet they're all comfortable and ardent bowling fans. Too bad we don't have larger space for more people. You're but right. we have all of you watching. That's what counts. Ringer leads by 13, seventh frame. All right, third strike for the big man from Big Springs, Texas. Going to take a break and then we'll return. Look at Norm Duke while we we're away. Came up with uh, a double with strike in the seventh frame. Now shooting on the left lane in the eighth. Can take the lead right here. Chanting for Norm Duke. Duke takes that ball inside that realigns his shoulder, has that good knee bend. Now he's going to root it in. This is for the lead, seven pins. Eighth frame, he likes it. He has the pressure on Ringener, but Ringener can retake the lead with a strike here in the eighth. He has a strike up in the seventh. Keep repeating this. Why we ball throw? Well, it's because we're running behind a lot of time schedule with nine spares in this first match. No doubt about that shot. Ringener, he likes it. Get it in that light zone or that swish zone. Boom! Drive that five over into the four seven. He has a three pin lead, can extend back to his original lead of 13 pins. Chris, he must have great concentration the way he snaps his head through right at that last moment to keep his eyes on a target. This is a big shot. Let's see if he can stay down with it. Beautifully done. Really warming up. The, don't forget the winner of this match will meet Dave Ferraro, one-time champion from Kingston, New York. The two Texans going head and head. I'm sure they've met each other many a time in the PBA regional program and probably other local tournaments, so... They know each other's style. I know Norm Duke. He doesn't give up or back down to anyone. Phil Ringener proving his medal as he has strung together three strikes here in the seventh, eighth, and ninth frames. Duke, though, in a must situation, trailing by 13, has three strikes working. To three pens. You get a great relationship of how the pins are being driven down as you see the ball drive through the one, three, five, and nine. There's the six pin over in the right hand part of the screen, just tapping out the ten. That keeps Duke in the match. And once again, Chris, as we've had so many times in the last three weeks, a match going right to the very last frame. Mm -hmm. It's up for grabs for the man who could perform an attempt. This man winning in 83 here, Malacosta, the defending champion, finished 52nd this week. Now, the only person to win two in the Cleveland area. Duke for the lead. Oh, at the last moment. Down with the 10. Here is a shot by a disciplined, well-practiced player as you watch the six-pin do the job on the 10 once again in the most critical situation in the match. Look at how well he stays down. There's practice. There's discipline. He gave it plenty of room. He didn't throw it too hard. And he got the desired result. Now he can take a 17-pin lead with one more strike, but by no means can he shut out a very tough Phil Ringer. Looking away, Ringener. And again. In 1983, when Norm Duke went through four great opponents, as you said earlier, Chris, he had a tremendous pocket carry percentage. By that, we mean that he carried right at 90% when he won that tournament. Come on, he's saying, come on, ball, hook, 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 turnover. I like it. I got the 10-pin. I have a 17-pin lead. 
going back to 1983, he carried 90% of his pocket hits. So far today, he's carried six out of seven, so he's got it going. Five foot five inch, 125 pounder, shooting a big 244, eight strikes. And it didn't seem that way when he put together five spares in a row. Now, Phil Ringener must strike on the next two balls. In either the 10th frame here or the 11th frame, if Phil fails to strike, the match is over. If he strikes twice, He'll need eight or better on the final shot. There's one. What a first match. Started out like watching grass grow. <laughs> Great match play competition. This is not exhibition bowling. This is not metal play. This is match play. And both players have arisen to the occasion after a slow start. Chris, you've seen it many times in a boxing match where mm -hmm. they feel each other out in the early going. Now, it's the closing rounds. Ringener must strike on this ball. as Phil Ringer just saws the five pin apart. Watch the action of the ball. It drives the one, three. There's the power, the five. See you later. Now, Ringer must get eight pins or better to win the match and go on to meet Dave Ferraro, another hard-throwing right-hander. Seven pins is a tie. Six is a loser. All right. Using most all of the approach in the right lane. Norman Duke looking away. Norman Duke, six in a row, 244 at the end. Phil Ringener, a 243, leaving the bucket. What a match, Nelson. It's been a while, Chris, since we've seen a match that changed so much throughout the match, then both players getting red hot. And then, unfortunately, for Phil Ringener, a six count, a little lack of experience there. On a slick lane, you got to start it up high when you only need seven to tie. That match is history. Norm Duke loosened up, came it rose to the occasion. Now he's got another opponent very similar to Ringener, fireballing Dave Ferraro. But here's Duke, first shot. Had eight strikes in that victory, 244, leaving the four pin on the left lane. The four pin. What happens if you knock the four out? The two pin will go to the sidewall and come between the four and seven pins. It doesn't happen on this particular shot. He leaves the four. There's the two pin. Goodbye. Knocks the seven out. There's the four, an easy spare for Duke to start the second match. So as he started the first match with a spare, in fact, five in a row. Now we get a look at Dave Ferraro, who was 10th here at the Buckeye Lanes last year. He won in Columbus, Ohio, his only title in 1986. First stroke. What a contrast in styles. Look at the profile view of a very upright bowler. You're right, Chris, but he gets all that leverage by standing upright, a long swing. Dave is a speedball bowler, not a very high back swing, but he makes it very long by standing upright and a good uplift with the ball as he goes through the shot. A little stiff-legged at the line, but he gets the job done. He has a great, relaxed, or what I call loosey-goosey arm swing. This man never tightens up, has great pin carry. Crossed this championship pair twice, averaging 246. Here's the hit. What a great break. Watch the action of the six pin as it just love taps the 10. There it lays down in the channel. Boom. Those pins know if a player's relaxed and has something on the ball. All right, Duke. 
came to life. The one thing he has to guard against in this match is getting too slow with the bowling ball. He was rolling 16 and 17 miles an hour last match. He can't get any slower. Oh, the line on the right lane for Duke, perfect. Shooting on the left, third frame with that strike, of course, working. By rounds, where he stood. After the first 18 games, which is the round three, he was in sixth place. He closed in the last round very strongly, finishing in fourth. Right now, he's shooting for the number three position if he can defeat Dave Ferraro. Now, let's see if Duke uses a little more speed on this left-hand lane to avoid the high hit and keep the string going. shirt is Dave Ferrar. You may remember him at the Quaker State Open, Ginny Halsey's fine establishment in Grand Prairie, where he won two matches and then met Brian Voss, our tournament leader here in Cleveland, and lost. Duke's shot, absolutely perfect on the left lane. Ferraro has two strikes in a row. Leaving the 2-5. The championship pair, the left-hand lane hooks about one board more than the right-hand lane. So what happens to Dave Ferraro, his ball slides by. The head pin goes to the sideboard. Instead of coming back and mixing all the pins over on the left-hand side, it just slides behind the two pin, leaves him the two five. He has to avoid the chop. Try to take the two and the five with the ball. Gives him 48 for the second uh, with a spare up. We're in our second match. If you just joined us, uh, you missed a humdinger where Norm Duke defeated Bill Ringener, 244 to 243. Winner of this game will meet Mats Carlson and then Brian Voss as we look at Dave's wife, Gloria. Strike in the fourth frame for Dave Ferraro going against Norman Duke. We'll be back with more after this. Toledo next week, but it's a hot time here at the Buckeye Lanes in North Olmsted, Ohio. Norm Duke, while we were away, uh, doubled, making it four in a row. And he's going out to a 22-pin lead. Ferraro can cut that by 10 with a strike up in the fourth, now shooting in the fifth. And he does just that. A pro from Kingston, New York. There you'll see our 1987 average leaders. U.S. Open winner Del Ballard up there. Holman, who's failed to garner a title. Pete Weber hasn't won anything this year either. Houston, and there's Dave Ferraro, who's in this match today. 215, obviously an upgraded scoring over the previous years. We've shown you that before on ABC. The tour's averages are up about five pins per man. I think it's really a good, good move. Now, here's Ferraro to cut the lead to two. Come on. All right. Tremendous competition here. And you'll hear Duke, Duke, Duke from the crowd. They're rooting for the line from Fort Worth, Texas. Here's a great shot, Chris, to see how the player plays the line. Right down the first arrow, right in the pocket. Tremendous angle to carry all the pins out. Duke with four in a row in his victory over... Ringener, 244 to 243, seven strikes. The staccato chant, Duke, Duke, Duke. We heard it in 1983, and it was the emphasis and drive to help bring him the title of that year. Obviously, it's helped him so far as he got a tremendous break in the first match by winning over by one pin over Phil Ringener. Here in this match, he's just bowling so well. And Chris, the way he's carrying that 10 pin out is just marvelous. That high tracking roll that you can hear going down the lane is doing the trick on the pins. Listen to the ball hit the thumb hole. Very animated, Norman Duke, 23 years old. We're in our second match. More of it will be coming your way, but first, this message. Okay, while we were away, perfection continues on the part of Dave Ferrar. You see it there, five in a row now. And why do I say while we're away? Well, we're running 
behind our time schedule because of somewhat slow bowling and a lot of spares in the first match. We have 90 minutes to get our four matches in and give you a champion, so that's why we have to do it. Norm Duke used to high-scoring matches as one of the players that was involved in the perfect 300-game tie in Las Vegas. Purvis Granger, Norm Duke in the 24-match game finals this year at the Showboat tied at 300. The other perfect tie we had was Tommy Baker and Pete Weber in Denver a few years back. Now here's Duke, two-pin lead. Seven in a row. NCAA Championships Live. Should be great, Chris. We also have the Athlete of the Week, but in the wrestling, you got to watch Oklahoma this year, Penn State this year. They've all beaten Iowa in the uh, in dual meets during the year, and Iowa should have their hands full. Iowa State also very tough. Here's Duke, 12-pin lead. Well, Duke was going for eight in a row. University of Iowa wrestling team going for 10 in a row, NCAA championships. The action of the six pin, Duke has had it working so well, driving it straight back into the 10 pin, not to be on this particular shot. Not quite enough leverage on the pin. It slides right by the 10 pin, ends his streak of seven strikes in a row here in the ninth frame. You would think with seven in a row, he'd have the match well in hand. Not so. With this conversion, he would only lead in the match by 11 pins. Ferraro, a possible 278, his opponent. That is something that a player should never do. He has so many strikes, he kind of forgot how to shoot spares. And here's what happened. He just opens the door for Dave Ferraro. Duke went from a potential 11-pin lead to a one-pin deficit. Ferraro took the lead on the bench. Let's see if he jumps right on it in this shot. Come on! That he does. Like Duke Ferraro going for his second PBA title. Dave's been on the tour eight years. Comes from a bowling family, a bowling establishment in Kingston, New York. Having a roof caved in during a Quaker State Open, and that Bo were happy to report that Steve and his father Jack have reopened the establishment as of Thursday. Back in business, mm -hmm. and so is Dave Ferraro in this match. Match. He just told Norm Duke with that last shot, this is the professional bowler's tour. You do not miss 10 pins. With this shot, he'll put Duke away. See you later. Amazing. Norm Come Duke. Out of the woodwork. You're right, Chris. Norm Duke, the best he can bowl is 257. Ferraro's already in the 260s. One slight mistake, Norm Duke, and see you later. Tremendous performance, but not enough today. Ferraro just needs a routine pin count of any type. Just a few pins on this ball, and he is the winner. That salts it away right there, Chris. All right. What a performance, Dave Ferraro, after Duke's great performance in the first match, 244 to 243. And this was where Norm Duke left himself down. Watch his footwork as to see if he slides or slips a little bit as he comes through. See him kind of get a little bit off balance. Too much angle. He starts way on the left side instead of around the third arrow. The ball slides off. It's the difference in the match. All right, for the winner, a 277. Now it's time for Nelson Burton's tip of the week. Third in a series on practice. Watch and listen. The Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week is brought to you by Old Spice. Its subtle masculine fragrance is a classic scent of the American male. I've placed these three pieces of tape down on the lane to make a point. Over the years on the Pro Bowlers Tour, we have taught players how to adjust their strike line. And they do a pretty good job when they can play around the second arrow, as indicated by the red tape. But where they have problems is when they have to adjust to the extreme outside line for slick lane conditions, as indicated by the white tape, or for dry lane conditions and the inside line, as indicated by the yellow tape. Today's bowling tip will show you how to familiarize yourself with that extreme outside line and that extreme inside line so you can feel comfortable in all the strike positions. The first five frames of this session 
practice the extreme outside line so you feel comfortable when you have to play the shot. In the second half of your practice session, work on the extreme inside line because this is where most players have the biggest difficulty. Practicing your strike zones will improve your strike percentage and your average. Completed a look at the scores. Duke Tour 44 to Ringeners 243, and then Ferraro, 10 strikes, 277 to Dukes 257. Carlson against Ferraro next. Some of the numbers for the week. Field average, as usual, 160 players. The average game for all the players, 211. That's tremendous. 218 to make the top 24. Some of the other cashers in the top 53. Magic Gray, Palmer Falgren up there again. Johnny Petraglia, Walter Ray Williams Jr. had a chance to win 50,000. Also cashed this week. Here's some of the other top 24 fin finishers. McDowell, Schlegel, Webb. Butch Soper, another good week. Marshall Holman, as usual, up there. The 300 man. Veteran Carmen Salvino. Steady Rowdy Morrow, Billy Young, uh, once again bowling well. Jazz now made it in the King Louie finals last week. Parker Bone the third, Hall of Famer Dick Weber, Kent Wagger the showboat man, Ted Malicki, one of the great crave shop owners in this area, great ball drawer up there. George Pappas, Firestone man, Sam Flanagan, Gil Slyker, veteran Dave Davis, and Tita Semez round out the top 24. This photograph of the 1978 Tucson champion on the PBA tour. Jeff Mattingly, PBA members and bowling fans, Pacific Northwest in particular, saddened to learn Jeff was killed in an automobile accident near his home. And of course, our sympathy go to Jeff's family and his many friends. Capacity crowd here at the Buckeye Lanes for the Miller Light Open. $27,000 to the winner today. And uh, Mats Carlson of Gothenburg, Sweden, moves in now. He finished second overall in the field of 160. He'll go against Red Hot Dave Ferraro, just shot at 277. Mats Carlson, who won the Greater Los Angeles Open the day that Pete McCordick shot a perfect 300 game and picked up $100,000 from True Value. Mott's another one of the deliberate players. Obviously, he is very close to that 15-second PBA rule. And practicing off to the right along with our tournament leader, Brian Voss, Mott's has come up with a strike. The action of the head pin. The head pin goes to the sideboard, takes out the two, four, five, and seven. Watch this. is all even after one frame. It's our semi-final match. The winner to meet, Brian Voss. Chris, the players so far today, even though we started slowly in that first match with Phil Ringener and Norm Duke with a bunch of spares, are now going at a record pace for a championship round. The composite record pace average for all eight games is 250 in 1979. The players so far are going at a 255 pace. Ten pin. Let's see if Dave Ferraro learned anything on this ten pin as he picks up his ball and shoots across lane. This is the same lane that Norm Duke missed the ten pin on that allowed Ferraro to take the match in hand. So let's see what happens. Cross lane. No problem. Dave Ferraro, very very quick bowler, contrasting with Mats Carlson. Next week. The $260,000 PBA National Championship, Toledo Trust, big sponsor behind it. Then we go to the Fairlanes Open Heightsville, Maryland, to be followed by, we go to Atlantic City for the first time for the Atlantic City Open at the Showboat, new Showboat, then the Greater Hartford Open, Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Going for a double. A four pin. Mats Carlson, who is credited as being one of the top foreign players in the world, obviously he is 
one of the top pro bowlers in the world now, as you see the profile of Mott. He extends that push away very early and kind of runs after the bowling ball. Low profile at the line and pulls up on that six feet, one inch, 170 pound free. All right. The man who's a vision in light blue and gray, including the bowling ball, Mutz Carlson. I asked him uh, a little earlier if he'd been back to Sweden. He said, yes, I was there after the Quaker stayed open for 36 hours. You talk about a dutiful husband. He went back to pick up Gloria and bring her back to the States. Oh, well, that's nice. He also owns two pro shops over in that area. He owns one in Sweden and one in Norway. As you see, the fingertip grip of Mats Carlson digs those fingers into those grippers he has inserted in the thumb hole, grits the teeth, checks the hand position, little mental checklist with the voice, pushes it away. It's not that painful, Mats. Let's see what happens. All right, Carlson who won five of the last eight matches, moving from sixth to second. See the trajectory of Mats Carlson. He throws the ball very slowly, not much like the other players, the fireballers. He's in around the second arrow and lets the ball do the work. A smooth rolling ball. Once again, carries the wall shot, the two, four, five off the wall. Here's Ferraro to even the match with a strike. A 10 pin. Dave Ferraro, two 10 pins in a row. He hit this pocket solid in the first frame. Just a pinch light in the second frame, leaving the 10 pin once again as he's quickly up on the approach to convert the 10 pin on the right hand lane here, third frame. Here you see the money winners. McCordick with that $100,000 perfect game. Del Ballard won 100,000 in the U.S. Open. Pete Weber steady all year. Tom Milton was up there. And Chris, here are today's bowlers where they stood going into today's action. Our tournament leader, Voss, 11th. Ferraro, who's in this match, 13th. Carlson, 18th. Norm Duke, 26th. And Phil Ringner making a comeback was in 120th position. Obviously, he'll prove that today. In fact, Ringner picked up $5,500 today in losing to Duke in the first match. Close match again. We'll be back with more. Looking at a foreign-born winner on the tour from Gothenburg, Sweden, Mats Carlson. Mats Carlson won a PBA tournament as an amateur player, and uh, he's not the only one to do that. John Juni, another member, won that, and Gary Madison. So there's been three amateurs that have won pro tournaments. And on the right lane, he has left the 4-7. Here is Mike Hart, Director of Marketing Planning for the Miller Brewing Company. They uh, in money toward their three championships, over a half million dollars. Mike, uh, instrumental in that, and quite a man himself, as he is a physical conditioning buff who likes his bowling. Okay, Mutz Carlson, we asked him if the McCordick's 300 game took the luster away from his victory. I think it had a good effect on me because uh, it took all the pressure off that tournament for me because every, he had all the tension on that show and I was just the guy who snuck in there and I beat him. Very cerebral way to attack a championship match, Chris. He mm -hmm. let the confusion uh, prevail and he took advantage of the situation. Obviously, he's always thinking up there on the approach. Right now, he leads by one pin, fifth frame. Tentative, eight pin, but perfect. Mats Carlson in the old style of, say, the Andy Vera Papas, twists that wrist behind his back, then relocates it right down at the bottom of the swing. Just has a straight lift through, very simple, almost like uh, an amateur bowler would roll, but he has w it well under control. There's a double for Dave Ferraro. If you just joined us, we'll bring you up to date. Norman Duke won the first match over Philip Ringener, two Texans, 244 to 243. Then Dave Ferraro came back to eliminate Duke, 277 to 257. Winner of this match will meet our tournament leader, Brian Voss. Ferraro, nine pin lead, two strikes up, can extend to 19, six frame. Pen, left lane. Disgust on the face of Ferraro. 
you have that. This looks like an apparent perfect hit. The ball drives through the one, three. Doesn't deflect much, drives the five and the nine straight back. Not to be another solid 10 as we have another close match. There is the commissioner of the Professional Bowlers Association coming in from Akron, Joe and Tenora. Akron only being about 30 miles south of Cleveland. Once again, we'll have our last tournament on the PBT Professional Bowlers Tour on ABC Sports. There, the Firestone Tournament of Champions, April 25th. Now here's Mats Carlson with an attempt to take the lead. He trails by eight. And then this. Mm. Mats Carlson having all sorts of trouble with the right-hand lane. He gets the ball up very high. The four pin goes straight back, doesn't take off the seven, the six, six and 10 pins. Once again, standing on the right-hand side. Mots quickly on the approach, needs to slide the six over. He does it. The Scandinavian. What a beautiful conversion. Mots never doubt. Nicks the seven pin from behind. Chris, he's taking about 25 seconds to get up there and shoot the, the strike shots, and he's having trouble. He only took two seconds to get that split down. Maybe, maybe there's a lesson to be learned there. Mots has not missed this left-hand lane in the first, third, or fifth frames. Here's the seven. Pulling the trigger effectively in the seventh frame of the strike, trailing by eight. We'll be back. Kingston, New York, in his second match today with a big victory over Norman Duke, 277 to 257, leading by eight shooting in the seventh frame against Mats Carlson. Four pin, a little high. Both players beginning to struggle a little bit as the lanes are what we say breaking down a little bit as Gloria looks on. Her husband already has one match in hand, leads this one by seven. When I say the lanes are breaking down a little bit, Annette Carlson, who is traveling the country with her, her husband, also looking on. Okay. It's tomorrow on ABC Sports. Jack Nichols. Ferraro, seven pin lead, eighth frame. Oh, come on. Oh. Look at Dave Ferraro's game. Strike first frame, 10 pin, 10 pin, second, third frame. Strike fourth and fifth. Solid 10 in the sixth, four pin in the seventh. Another solid 10 here in the eighth frame as nothing has gone exactly the way he designed it so far in the match, although he still leads by six. Real stylist, Dave Ferraro. in the sport of bowling, you must adjust to the lane surface. And what the players have done is have to start to throw a ball quite a bit harder as you see a clock in the right-hand part of your screen. Obviously, it's uh, not an official clock, but Mats Carlson has 15 seconds in which to at least initiate his approach to the foul line. He's going to be right at it. Look at that, right at the 15. It's a three pen on the right lane. The penalty for infraction of the 15-second violation on the PBA Tour would be a warning the first time from Harry Golden. The second time would be a monetary fine. The third time, and so on and so forth, up until finally, as you look at Annette Carlson realizing her husband's somewhat lost on how to play the lanes, finally, I guess they would obviously have the right to remove him if he had enough violations. Okay, here's Carlson trailing by six. Annette like Mats from Gothenburg, Sweden, also the home of former heavyweight champion of the world, Ingemar Johansson, who did not take that long to deliver a punch, I can assure you, because I did all his championship fights against Floyd Patterson, and he was thunder. Mats Carlson, who, using that purple ball on his strike ball and the gray ball on his sphere balls, uh, once again, as you see the clock, 
15 seconds from the time you step on the approach. I think if you go any longer than that, Chris, your muscles will tighten up. You really won't make a good shot. Boy, well, sure has that timed well. Now he has left the 4-8 on the left lane. Mott's hits the head pin very light. Is he, what we say, double dribbles the ball. When he released it, you heard a boom, boom. The ball slipped off his hand, did not get any lift at all. Slides by the head pin, leaving a difficult 4-8 spare. And the man who used a burgundy ball in his first shot in a gray to make his spares, Mott's Carlson. Now, for our shooting of the night with the spare working, leading by eight pins. Ferraro kind of ga regaining his thoughts. He's had every ball right around the pocket through eight frames. He just leads by eight pins. Contrast in time, six seconds for Ferraro. Contrast in results. What a foundation strike for Ferraro. Yes, Gloria liked it. Next week, PBA National Championship, the Toledo Trust Championship in Toledo. 260,000, Nelson. It's a big payday for the winner. That's for sure. At Mike Ducat's Imperial Lanes, one of the great championships, the second jewel in bowling's triple crown of major events. Our final telecast on ABC Sports with the Pro Bowlers Tour, the Firestone, the final event. Now, here's Ferraro. He can salt away the match with a strike. Come on, Come on boy. We talk to it. Dave Ferraro has all the balls around the pocket. As the late great Billy Whalow used to say, Chris, if you go to the well enough times, eventually you're going to get water. Now, he got water on this shot because he nailed down a victory with that shot. That's a winner right there. Four pin. A 2.15 for Dave Ferraro. He has won his second match. Now has the right to meet the tournament leader, Brian Boss, for the 27 grand. The professional bowlers tour will continue after this message and a word from our local stations. David Ferraro has won his second match, this time over Mats Carlson of Sweden, 215 to 184. And now they go into the final match. Brian Voss, a winner at the Quaker State Open, trying for his second title of the year. 27,000 to the winner of the Miller Lite Championship coming up. We often talk about uh, the bowlers out here on tour that come from the college ranks. There you see two. On the left, Jackie Sellers of Penn State University. And on the right, that is Rick Steelsmith of Wichita State University being presented. They're Bowlers of the Year trophies by Elaine Hagan, chairman of the Bowling Writers Association Collegiate Committee. Making also inaugural scholarships award, though, as awarded by the Miller Brewing Company, $5,000 in scholarships to the Miller Lite Collegiate Man and Woman Bowlers of the Year. Wonderful project. No doubt, Chris. And once again, I'd like to tell people who are interested in college scholarships where to get a hold of it. Right, the Young American Bowling Alliance. Care of Barbara Peltz, P-E-L-T-Z. 5301 South 76th Street, Greendale, Wisconsin, zip 53129. As the crowd is starting to get into the act, the championship match, Chris, I think Dave Ferraro is going to be almost impossible to beat. He has the momentum, and he's got the right shot. But Boss may have something to say about that. That's a perfect opener. Brian Boss, what I say, he doesn't have the right shot, although he dominated this field. The lanes were hooking quite a bit more than they were, than they are right now during the tournament. Brian really struggled in practice. He didn't have much confidence going for him. He needs to get off to a quick start, and he's opening three frames. The Army veteran from Tacoma, Washington, with three titles, light hit, leaving the two pin. If you'd like to get a style to emulate, watch this young man. Four-step delivery, everything in perfect position, deep knee bend, strong legs at the bottom, extended follow-through, and he's got the type of ball that can hit most any lane condition. Brian Boss was fourth in this championship last year. He, uh, unfortunately, is 0 for 4 in the role of tournament leader but he has three titles. 
Brian should do quite well on the left-hand lane. It finishes a little more and will accommodate that medium speed hook that he throws. The right-hand lane, I think his adjustment's going to be have to do something he doesn't like to do, and that's throw it hard. But let's see what happens here. And the seven pin on the left lane. All right, pretty good shot to start the match. You watch the head pin action here. Now, we've seen it go to the sideboard and take out the four, five, and seven. This time, it just slides slightly in front of the seven pin and only takes out the two, four, and five. There it goes. A little interference in the left-hand corner. Not a good break for Brian Voss, but an easy spare. Back of the line, almost fell over. 28-year-old poster boy. We have a final score, Southeast Regional. Georgetown being eliminated by Providence, 88 to 73. Providence has some good players, don't they, Chris? They do. Have one that left Indiana University, Delray Brooks, that moved to Providence and has helped that team. So Dave Ferraro, who has won two matches coming into this final, leaves the 6-10. Nothing to really panic about for Ferraro on that particular shot. Every once in a while, whether it be golf, bowling, basketball, you throw an errant shot. You forget about it. You pick up the ball and go back and try to do the best you can. That was his one bad shot for the day. And Van chops the six off the ten. Right there, something you can't always prevent. When you leave a 6-10 or something like that, a choppable spare, You'll watch the six pin right here as he takes it straight back off the 10. Not much you can do about that. If you shoot that 10 times, sooner or later you're going to chop it. It happened at an inopportune time for Ferraro as he trails by 11. This is going to be a good tight match. Now to regroup. And he leaves a four. Towards the end of that semifinal match against Mods Carlson. We were talking about the lanes, what we said, breaking down. But the pros mean by that is that the lanes start hooking a little bit more. The oil breaks down or dissipates. The players must adjust one of two ways. Either throw the ball harder or move a little bit to the left on the approach. Dave Ferraro, who lost to Brian Voss in the finals of the Quaker State Open. Now Brian is back up. Spare working, looking for his first strike, shooting in the third. The grip of Brian Voss. Fingertip grip, extended index finger for balance. He kind of twitches that to get the feel. Then he's ready to go. And a high hit, leaving the four, six, seven. Exactly what we expected, Chris. He went light in the first ball, and here he goes up right through the middle of the pins. He's quickly up on the approaches. He'll just try to slam the four seven out and bounce one of those pins out into the six pin. He's going to have trouble on the right hand lane. He has to make an adjustment. And that adjustment has to be speed. He can't move anywhere. He has to throw it hard. All right, now trailing by three in this championship match. Both professionals with open frames. Ferraro in the second, chopping the six off the 10, and now Voss in the third. Brian has made two tremendous improvements in the last couple years with his game. Number one, he can throw it hard, and number two, he's straightened out his arm swing. He used to have a little loop in his swing. It's perfectly straight now. Top player. And a 10-pin for the 28-year-old who's making his seventh television appearance in a five-year career with three titles. You'll probably see a line a little bit more towards the center of the lane for Brian Voss than we've seen from the other players. See, he's right over the second arrow. We saw Ringener Duke out around the first arrow. Not quite enough finish at the back end of the lane. Leaves a 10 pin with a conversion. He will trail by three pins. Okay. Three pins separating these champions in the final match. High lanes in North Olmsted, Ohio. It's a pretty sunshiny day in this suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. From Kingston, New York. Dave Ferraro with two victories, leading by three, shooting the fourth frame, spare up. The bucket. Leads by three, now trails by one as he's left himself a very difficult spare. The head pin goes to the sideboard, just takes out the seven pin, and leaves the two, four, five, and eight. One of the more difficult spares, or a choppable spare, similar to the choppable spare he had in the second frame on this lane. 
Mess to make sure he carries out the five and the eight pins, the two tough pins. Okay, earlier we asked Dave Ferraro about some very special news. He gives it to us. Well, uh, about three weeks ago, my wife and, my, and I received some special news that we were expecting our first child. And I do think that's going to give me a little more incentive here today. There's the mom to be. And the incentive that uh, David has, obvious, is will show up sooner or later. But right now, he needs a little ball speed to get that ball to set in the pocket. And he leaves a 10 pin. Well, that's what David has to do. Right now, these lanes call for more ball speed. Under today's modern conditions, moving left is a secondary move. More ball speed is, a, is the easiest way to adjust to urethane bowling, polyurethane bowling surfaces. David does it very well. So that's what he needs to do. Speaking of speed, a lot of speed and grace as Wide World of Sports will bring you the World Figure Skating Champions Tour plus live coverage of the NCAA Wrestling Championships. Obviously, an adjustment for the spare shot as Dave Ferraro takes the center of the lane, drives the 10 pin straight back but he has handed Brian Boss a two-pin lead. Let's see if Brian can hit this lane. He has really struggled on the right-hand lane. There's the man who won in Grand Prairie. Last year, what a year. He finished third twice, fourth three times. Ted Malicki, one of the great ball drillers of all time, local talent up here, making a cameo appearance in the qualifying round, soon gave way to Boss in the qualifying. In the match play, Pete McCordick, a quick run. Voss once again regained the lead. 42 games in all. Voss has stayed close in this match, maintains a, ten, maintains a two pin lead, can extend to 12 with the first double of the championship round. Though, you know, it was heartening to see this week as we look at the uh, pin reaction. Solid 10. Four Hall of Famers were in the top 24. Carmen Salvino, 12th, Dick Weber, 17th, George Pappas, 20th, and Dave Davis, 23rd, who had the misfortune of bowling against opponents who had 300s, including Brian Boss. <laughs> <laughs> the other was Parker Bone, the third. And Dennis Kucinich, celebrated former Cleveland mayor. You gained a little crowd reaction with that uh, that picture on the screen, Chris. Mm -hmm. And now here's Dave Ferraro. Pick up your ball speed, Dave. Do what you do best. Quit moving around. There you go. Come on, David. Okay, strike. Six frame. Scoreboard tells the story. Ferraro struggling through the early part of the match. Voss also. Voss got zeroed in in the fifth frame. Ferraro was close in the fifth and finally struck here in the sixth. Seesawing back and forth. Once again, Ferraro can take the lead with another strike. Chris, there's going to, the action will pick up right here. Ferraro will start throwing strikes. I'm sure he's made the adjustment. He knows that he needs ball speed to win this title. And he gets a big double. Yet only his third strike through seven frames as Voss is up with a spare working. The first time we've seen this shot is that two pin goes to the sideboard, driving between the four and seven pins. Couldn't have happened at a more opportune time for Dave Ferraro takes the lead. Strike in the seventh. What an educated shot that Brian Voss just rolled on the right-hand lane. He didn't pick up the ball speed. He used a little more loft over the foul line to delay the hook. A very pro move in a way of adjusting to the lanes. He's kept himself in the match. Now he has not had a strike on the left-hand lane. He needs to hit this lane to regain the lead. Thomas Brian Voss. Watch the loft. Watch the knee bend. He's good knee bend. Good lift. 
extends that ball about three feet over the foul line, and the result, perfect. Boss has the lead. Unexpected four pin by Dave Ferraro. Normally when he throws the ball that hard, the ball is what we say just sets there in the pocket. Not to be the ball just cuts a pinch high. David leaves a four pin, and now he will trail in the match by three pins with just two frames remaining. All right, we look at Dave Ferraro. Bo, I have a I have a trivia question. Who was the first intercollegiate polling champion? The first intercollegiate bowling champion. All right, I'll let you think. Rick <laughs> Steele Smith of uh, Wichita State University and Jackie Sellers of Penn State were awarded their Bowler of the Year scholarships today. Chuck Pisano at Rutgers is a syndicated bowling columnist. Chuck Pisano, what a great man. Been a historian with the PBA. His son, one of the great college bowlers down in the Florida area. Now, Dave Ferraro, ninth frame, trails by three. Championship match. Carry. Ooh. 27,000 to the winner, 14,000 for second. Ferraro going for his second title. This man, Brian Voss, for his fourth. Ferraro's best shot of the match. So the eyes tell the story. Boy, did I throw that nice. All right. Now, Voss in a position to take the first commanding lead of the match with another strike would lead by 13. Okay. 10 on the right lane. The tournament leader has won the last three weeks. I cannot remember a tournament leader going four weeks in a row, Chris. In recent years, Fer Ferraro is now threatening to end that streak. Boss could have uh, obviously put a good foothold on it with a strike here. The match is down to two pins. We have a potential tie. Fourth match of the day. Started out with Duke defeating uh, Ringener, 244 to 243. Then Duke losing to Ferraro, 277 to 257. Ferraro beating Carlson, 215 to 184. And in a tight one for the title, Voss on the left lane. No matter what Brian Voss does, even though he has a two-pin lead going into the 10th, he cannot lock out Ferraro. <laughs> With that, pardon me, Chris, with that strike, he has forced Ferraro to get at least one strike to win the tournament. What close-ups? Boss leads by two, can make it 12. Tournament leader Jinx that he's held in four situations as a tournament leader he has yet to win. Chris, he's won, been in the winner's circles before. As you said, he had never won for the number one position, but he has really, really made a fine effort in this, in this championship match. From the fifth frame on, right on here until the final ball, Voss has put everything he's had behind the shot. Educated, kept his composure, good loft, good lift. He's kept the pressure on Ferraro. It's important to get at least a nine-pin count. Gets them all a 2.04, but three in a row at the end. Six total strikes for Brian Voss, who hopes to become the first two-time winner of the year. Well, the fate will be decided by David Ferraro. Voss with a tremendous finish. Look at that adrenaline just flowing in there. He knows it's still in... in Ferraro's hand. Dave Ferraro must strike on the next two balls to win the tournament. There's one and a very convincing one, Bo. No doubt about it, Chris. Very confident. Evening. 
once again, the scenario set up. Remember, Jimmy Pritz came back last week, the, the father of two children against a bachelor. Once again, we have an expected father against the bachelor. Let's see if fate tells the story. Ferraro needs this strike for the title. Anything less than a strike, he cannot win. Frank DeFord once said in the Sports Illustrated, let the big dog eat. And right now, he's eating all he wants. He needs three pins to lock up the tournament. Just keep it in the building, young man. You are a champion. So it is a big air for Gloria and Dave Ferraro. We're in North Olmstead, Ohio, and we'll be back. Ferraro's won his second title in the state of Ohio. He and Gloria now receiving the trophy and the $27,000 check from Mr. Mike Hart, director of market planning, the Miller Brewing Company. The final score, 211, Dave Ferraro, 204, Brian Voss. Coming up next, ABC's Wide World of Sports presents the World's Figure Skating Champions Tour, featuring the 1987 world champion Katarina Beck and Brian Orser, plus national champion Brian Boitano and the exciting Debbie Thomas. Also, NCAA Wrestling, live, except on the West Coast, and the Athlete of the Year Award, all in ABC Sports, and that's next. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Once again, the winner, Dave Ferraro, 211 to Brian Voss's 204. Congratulations to the victor.